you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Statistics is a branch of math where we analyze and study data. So in processing the data, we need to gather it, organize it, analyze it, maybe present or represent it, and interpret it. One of the couple of the uh, vocabulary words, population, if we talk about population of data, that would be all possible members of a particular subject or topic area. And frequently that could be a very large group of items or people. So frequently statisticians don't have time to, say, poll every voter in the U.S., for example, if the voting population was our statistical population. So they use samples, so they pick a subset of the population. There's a whole at, uh, aspect of statistics in terms of how you select a uh, sample, which we won't be getting into. So we need to, once we've collected our data, we have to organize it. Uh, frequently when we are looking at some of the statistical measures we will want them in order <clears throat> and we could use a stem and leaf chart which I'll show in a minute to arrange uh, numbers in order. We may also group the data together in intervals or clumps and represent them using pie charts or histograms which is a type of bar chart. So here's some data that we'll be using in the tutorial here. These are some scores from a midterm exam and we might want to organize them so we can, I mean we could try to make a list and pick, pull them out and put them in order. What we're trying to accomplish here is grouping and, and orders. So a stem and leaf chart has, normally the leaf is the last digit and the stem is the rest of the number. So our scores could go from 100 and the lowest score is 20 something. So the stems are 2 up to theoretically 10. And we write the leaf, the digit, on the line. So the I do this in two paths. So in the first path I just go through the numbers and write each number. So 82 would go here, 93 is this, 93, 57 is this, 57. And we go through the list in order. Now we want these in order, so now we've kind of grouped the numbers by tens, so now we can order each of these rows. And now we have a ordered stem and leaf plot. If we were going decreasing, this would be 90. Well, actually, we decreasing, we go right to left, so 95, 95, 93, 93, 93, etc on down to 27 or counting from the bottom we're going left to right 27 30 42 so that's a stem and leaf plot now if we group the grades that represent an A B C D and F and count how many of the grades were in each category and plot them in a bar chart that's called a histogram so in this case there were six A's looks like here, 8 B's, 4 C's, etc. And we could organize that same data as a pie chart. So the size of the wedge in the pie is the percentage of data. So there were 21% of the grades were A's, so that wedge would be 21% of the full circle. If we wanted to figure out how many degrees this would be, this would be 21% of a full circle, which would be 21% of 360 degrees if we were trying to use a protractor to sketch a accurate pie chart. These days, almost everybody's going to use some kind of spreadsheet program for producing these charts. And one of the key measures and the simplest measures on statistics are called measures of central tendency. This gives us a view of what, how the data is clustered around what's called the mean. The mean is a numerical average of the data. So in ours we had 29 scores, so we add up the 29 scores and uh, divide by 29. The median is different, but you know, somewhat similar. The median is the middle value in the data. 
So since we had 29 numbers, we would be counting in 15 numbers from either end and arrive at a middle number. If we had had 30 scores, if we counted and found the middle of 30, it would be between two numbers. So the procedure is to take the number on each side of the middle and average those numbers. Again, we can use a stem and leaf chart to organize those and find, say, the median, or and we can use the graphing calculator to calculate all of these items. Uh, we'll show that in a minute. Mode is the most frequently occurring value. So if we go back to our list, oops, wrong way. When we look here, we had, let's see, we had three of these, so 393s and 382s. So those would be the mode. When you have more than one mode, in this case two modes, that could be called bimodal. Uh, some data may have, uh, have no numbers repeated, so they may have no mode. And range is the distance between the minimum value in the list and the max. Now we can use the graphing calculator to calculate all but the mode. And to do that, let me bring over the calculator. you got some screen captures here, but let's uh, look at how to do that. So let me pull up our data. So this was our data. Now the first step is to press the STAT button. And we want to input our data, so press Edit and we want to enter our data into list one. Now to save time in the video, I've already typed in or keyed in the 29 numbers for our data. So if we scroll to the bottom, we will see that there are 29 numbers in our list one. So the last item here was 90. Once we have the data entered to calculate those measures of central tendency and some other statistical measures, measures, we're going to press the stat button and go to calc menu, the calculation menu, and these measures that we're doing, the measures of central tendency, are called one variable statistics, so we select that. That puts the command on our calculation screen and we press enter. Now this is similar or the same thing as the screen I had captured here. Now in terms of nomenclature, in statistics, X with a bar over top of it stands for the mean, so our mean rounded was 70.8. If you added up all the values in the list, all those scores, it was 2053. The sigma, from, if you remember from a previous video, means sum, summation. We're not going to use this. In a minute, we'll talk about these two measures. These talk about what are called standard deviation, talks about how the data is dispersed. There were 29 items. N is the number of items. Now this arrow says there's more data, so let's scroll down. So we already had the mean, and now we have the min and the max. So we could subtract and calculate the uh, distance for the range and the median. We'll talk in a minute about this Q1, Q3. Those are called quartiles. So enter your data into list one, press stat, and do one variable statistics. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you